Hey guys, welcome back. Today's viewer question is from Bad Wolf 17 and Mr. Black from Pacific Northwest Mods and Maintenance. And they're both having the same diagnostic trouble code of P1299 cylinder head temperature sensor overheat detected fail safe cooling engaged and whatnot. And I thought this would make a good opportunity to film this because 95% of all the garbage I'm going to tell you applies to all Panther cars from 1992 to 2011, Crown Vic, Grand Marquis, Town Car, and Marauder. As far as the troubleshooting steps and even the parts uh, involved in this. So, um... Both of those guys uh, have very different cars. Uh, Bad Wolf 17 has a 2000 Mercury Grand Marquis, and Mr. Black has a 2011 P7B. And um, they both want to know a little bit more of how this code works, and uh, hopefully I can give them enough information to get started on their troubleshooting. So first, I want to go over uh, some service literature to uh, let you know uh, the description of this code and how it works and then I've got my scan tool hooked up I want to show you some live data and then we'll go under the hood and take some uh, measurement readings so um, let me give you the uh, description of this code uh, the description is it indicates indicates an engine overheat condition was detected by the cylinder head temperature sensor and failure mode effects management strategy called fail safe cooling was activated <clears throat> to cool the engine and under possible causes it says engine cooling system concerns low engine coolant level and base engine concerns and uh, for diagnostic aids, it says refer to fail-safe cooling strategy and cylinder head temperature sensor. And for pinpoint testing, it refers us to uh, pinpoint test DL with 20 steps. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do maybe about 25% uh, of that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what is a uh, cylinder head temperature sensor? Well, here's the definition for it. Uh, the cylinder head temperature sensor is a thermistor type sensor and is used to provide engine temperature information to the PCM. The sensor is installed in the cylinder head and me measures metal temperature. As temperature increases, sensor resistance decreases. On a cold engine, this sensor sends a high voltage to the PCM. On a hot engine, the PCM receives a low voltage signal. Using a CHT sensor and a cooling strategy will prevent engine damage due to overheating condition by allowing air cooling of the engine and limp home capability. So what I want you to take away from this is when the engine is cold, uh, the sensor provides a high voltage signal to the PCM and the PCM uh, gives the engine fuel. It says, "Give I'm cold, make me hot, give me fuel. And when the uh, engine is hot, it provides a low signal. It says, okay, I've had enough. Now you need to start trimming the fuel off. And when it gets too hot, uh, it's going to get into the fail-safe cooling mode and it's going to shut off uh, some fuel injectors to help cool it down uh, to uh, prevent... Um, the engine from overheating and damaging itself. Now uh, the next page on this is it gives you a, uh, a graph of uh, how the uh, CHT sensor works. It's got the voltage over here so when it's high voltage uh, that is going to correlate to a low temperature and as the temperature increases uh, the voltage or the resistance is going to drop and uh, in addition to this little uh, gra graph here, it gives us a very important chart that we're going to use later on. And this chart tells you, uh, you can look up the temperature of whatever the temperature of the sensor is, and that will tell you uh, what the voltage, voltage should be and what the resistance should be. 
And so as you take uh, your measurements, as the engine is warming up, if something is out of line, uh, that may indicate a uh, malfunctioning uh, sensor. Okay. So uh, back to those uh, three possible causes, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, what I want to know is, is the engine actually overheating or is the PCM just receiving bad information from that sensor or maybe the, the wires on that sensor are shorted to ground, shorted to hot or an open and providing uh, erroneous information. So the first thing I'd want to check is uh, thermostat operation. Uh, make sure the cooling fan is coming on, make sure the coolant level is correct, uh, make sure it's bled properly and there's no air pockets. And then second, I want to test the actual uh, CHT sensor for voltage, resistance, and wire damage. And then last but not least, uh, the pinpoint test, I would want to check the CHT sensor circuit on the PCM side of things and that's checking those two wires uh, where they're coming and going from for grounds, uh, short, short to ground, short to powers, a broken wire, and make sure it has the proper 5 volt reference. <clears throat> and uh, that's what this piece of paper here is here. Uh, this sensor, if I'm reading this correctly, it gets a 5 volt reference from the um, throttle position sensor, and then uh, it provides that 5 volt reference to the sensor, and then the sensor. Uh, sends uh, the, an, another signal to the PCM based on how hot or cold it is. <clears throat> and uh, these are all the pinpoint tests. And uh, one thing I want to mention that uh, this sensor uh, in my service literature it says I've got the part number here. I'll put a link to that down below. And it's the same part number from the model year 2000 to 2011. And uh, I looked these up and these are going for $20 at almost any uh, reputable parts retailer. Because uh, there's about a thousand different Ford models that use this uh, cylinder head temperature sensor. So it's a pretty common sensor. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Uh, this is one of those things where you really wouldn't want to buy that sensor and swap it out because in order to get to this sensor you've got to remove the intake manifold and my service literature says it's a three hour uh, factory time job or a four and a half hour motor time job so I'm thinking the factory time is what warranty would pay when the car was new and four and a half hours is out of warranty so I don't want to spend all the all that hours uh, to find out to replace the sensor and find out the sensor is still good. So um, that's why we're going to test it. And um, okay, so now let's get into my uh, live data testing. So to look at the live data, I'm going to be using this uh, Xtool A30M. And I'd like to give a shout out to Elsie from Xtool for sending this to me. Uh, this really is a fantastic tool and it's uh, working out pretty good. And I've got it connected to my super budget $120 8 inch tablet. And um, if you're lucky enough to have one of these advanced level enhanced uh, bi-directional scan tools, uh, you'll have the option to print. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I've gone ahead and done this uh, previously and these are all the sensor sensor uh, live data we're going to look at and uh, there's nine different values and uh, you can print all this information uh, to have as a reference and I, I would recommend you do that if you've got one of these scan tools okay so I've already got this fired up and uh, we're going to look at um, the CHT sensor values Okay, so there's nine different uh, <clears throat> PIDs we can look at, uh, but there's only a few that I'm really interested in. And the, the first one is right now the voltage it's sending to the PCM is 3.4 volts. 
and that's because my engine has been cold soaking for the past 24 hours and it's reporting it's at 61 degrees Fahrenheit and that's the same temperature as my garage right now so I guess you could say it's at uh, thermal equilibrium with my garage and all the other uh, components and fluids in, in, in the car and uh, the next uh, thing I want to show you is it gives you the status of the uh, malfunction indicator lamp for the cylinder head temperature sensor so I'm thinking that would be the overheating light in your dash here and then it's got a second indicator lamp uh, number two uh, and I think that would be the uh, fail safe engaged uh, light on your instrument cluster and then the last uh, sensor I pulled up here just for reference is my engine coolant temperature and it's reporting at 57 degrees Fahrenheit so 57 degrees Fahrenheit for the coolant and 61 uh, degrees for the cylinder head temperature sensor so I'm gonna say those are pretty much uh, the same okay now let's go under the hood and I want to show you some uh, things <coughs> <coughs> Okay, so uh, this right here is the connector for the CHT sensor, and I'm going to disconnect that now. So this part right here is going to the sensor that's going into the uh, cylinder head under the intake manifold. And then these, this part of the connector, uh, one of these two wires is getting a 5 volt reference from the uh, throttle position sensor and the other wire is going directly to the PCM so what we're gonna do is uh, now that I've disconnected this I want to look at the live data <clears throat> okay so now we can see that we've had some changes now the uh, now the cylinder head temperature sensor voltage is seeing the full uh, 5 volts and that's because I've disconnected it and now uh, there's no voltage drop it's getting the whole 5 volts to the uh, PCM and we can see that because the temperature sensor dropped to this default value of, uh, of uh, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit and then another thing I want to show you is see right here under sonar head temperature sensor status it says there's now a fault it's yes fault before it said no fault I forgot to show that to you and uh, and look at that it also uh, affects the uh, uh, coolant temp sensor it's, that's dropped to negative 40 <clears throat> okay so uh, I forgot to show you something else on that chart. Let me grab that chart real quick. Okay, so this right here is the uh, uh, the chart for the CHT sensor of what the uh, resistance value should be at the voltage value and what the temperature value is. So if you remember previously uh, when I was looking at the live data the first time it was at it was around 3.4 volts so that falls in between uh, these two right here and uh, for the temperature it falls in between uh, 50 and 68 so it looks like my sensor is falling in line with that and now what we're going to do is we're going to test the resistance of the sensor <clears throat> Okay, so uh, now we're just going to move to my basic uh, voltmeter and set it up for resistance. And I don't have the proper tools for this, so I just made some 
uh, makeshift probes out of some solid wire. And we're going to stick this in the connector going directly uh, to the sensor here. Like that. Okay. So now my uh, So now my uh, fluke meter here on resistance, it's reading 43 kiliohms uh, when the end for the uh, cylinder head temperature sensor. So remember that 43 kiliohms. And according to this chart, uh, in between 50 and 68 degrees, and right now we're at 60 degrees. It should be between 37 kiliohms and 59 kiliohms. So again, uh, it looks like my sensor at this temperature is good. According to the temperature reading, the voltage reading, and the resistance reading. So now what you want to do uh, to completely uh, test that sensor is you'd want to start the engine and you want to let the engine warm up. And as it's warming up, you uh, watch your uh, your meter right here of the resistance value you want to watch it change and as it as it's heating up uh, the resistance is going to continue to drop and what you're looking for is you're looking for it to drop uh, according to this chart and if it if you if the readings are not in line with the chart then that's going to indicate that the uh, your sensor is malfunctioned and that is going to give you a good enough reason to go through to remove the intake manifold to get to that sensor to replace it. Now one other thing uh, before you want to do that, before you do that three or four hour job uh, removing the intake manifold, you're going to have to or you, you most likely want to test the sensor side or the PCM side of this circuit. And, these, and that's these two wires on the other side of the connector. And remember, uh, you're going to have to check to make sure you've got a good 5 volt reference coming from the uh, uh, TPS sensor. And then you want to check the uh, integrity of the wire that's going from this connector directly to the PCM for shorts to ground, short to power, or an open or a wire damage or something like that. So once you do all that, that'll give you enough uh, confirmation of uh, if that sensor is bad or good uh, to replace it or not. Okay, uh, hopefully that'll give you two guys enough information to start uh, troubleshooting this on your uh, 2000 Mercury Grand Marquis and your 2011 P7B. Uh, I want to thank uh, Bad Wolf 17 for giving me this uh, question and Mr. Black. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.